Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a quick little puzzle game called Aeolus Shift uh, by developer Chanter. This is a game that essentially will have us controlling a big old pile of what appears to be confetti uh, and then shifting gravity by using WASD to send that confetti from a start point to an end point. And in each level we're going to encounter a variety of different obstacles that get progressively more complicated and uh, also progressively more interesting and intricate in a way. So it, it involves a little bit of strange thinking, but I really like the concepts into this game. So I think we're just going to give it a shot, see how we do, and hopefully this is something you might be into as well. So let's start at level one. You'll see I did play a few of these uh, ahead of time to get my head around what exactly the objectives were going to be here. So I did spend, you know, about five minutes or so with it. As you can see, I can use my cursor here to create as much of this confetti-style stuff as I like and just let it float around, and uh, the idea here is obviously to fill up this box, I'm not doing a very great job of that, but by using the WASD keys I can actually grab it, pull it, twist it, shape it, reform it, whatever you want to say, and, and basically float it right into the goal if we are particularly lucky, but you know, given the, uh, the way that I've spread it out, well, alright, it worked, but just barely. So we're going to go on to level 2 here, where we're going to have a little bit more of a complex goal. Uh, this time we can only spawn confetti in this little box, uh, but we can actually make as much as we like of it, so there's not really a reason uh, to stop until we just get bored. So essentially just make a whole pile of it on the top and just let it fill up and let it drop. And when we get it down to the other side, it should be enough to hopefully fill up that goal there, uh, provided we can get enough of it up through that channel, that tunnel as possible. And I think that's going to do it just fine, yeah. So we actually got an okay score on that one, 12-24 on that, and our, my best score, of course. Uh, so this one's going to get a little bit more complicated. Now we've actually got two goals to fill up at the same time. And again, though, we can use as much of the confetti-style material as we like. Uh, it's sort of an interesting proposition because I've seen games that use this sort of particulate art style before, and I'm not sure exactly how to describe it other than just sort of has its own feeling. Uh, but there's this game called, I think it's Powder Toy, where the, uh, you can basically make as many particles as you like, and all of them have their own attributes and styles uh, to what they do when they're around other things, so they interact with things a little bit differently. This is sort of like that, only minus the freeform exploration, and add in a little bit more of a focused game mode, where you actually have some very direct and distinct puzzles that you need to solve. And, you know, again, they're not super crazy complex, they don't involve, you know, working at something for ten years to try and figure out what exactly you need to do, uh, but they are sort of an interesting thing to uh, to mess around with, and as you can see, my only concern here was trying to get enough to stay in the left channel and then get some in the right channel. It also just sort of works out. So now we've got a new uh, group of conventions here. The game is pretty nice about tutorializing everything. As you can see, there's this little green, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, like a little green pillar light dot whatever up here that's going to turn all of my particles into green. Uh, and the green essentially will infect all of the other ones, it spreads out. And now we've got this sort of like colored green sand everywhere. So we're going to try and grab a big chunk of this stuff and get it up into the goal as we have been. Uh, and right now this is just again introducing us to the concept of changing colors, infecting our confetti with various colors, and then also having a switch which we need to be concerned with, because if we don't have that switch depressed, we're not going to make it through uh, to the other side of the screen. Now there's a couple of ways you could solve this obviously. One of them would actually be to just fill this entire moat up with sand, or, or confetti, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, I think I ran out. Okay, apparently you can't have an infinite amount of it. But that is as much as I can fit on the screen, evidently, and uh, that will make it very, very easy to solve the puzzle, because you just basically grab a whole pile and move it on through. So in this case, we need to spawn them and not get them to turn red, because red is not a solution uh, here. As we can see, if we just let a couple dots turn down, yeah, they turn totally red. So we got to make sure that we keep the predominant number of dots in the blue realm, because once they start turning red, they're actually going to infect all my other ones, and eventually you'll notice when the blue ones get over to it, they all get consumed uh, by that. So we can't have that at all. We need to actually restart. That's not solvable. Best bet with this one, try and do it right on the first try, although if I mess up a couple of little times, like the one dot is not going to spell the end of me. It's only if they get to be predominantly one color or the other, and in this case only red is a problem, obviously. Uh, but if we start to see some puzzles later on where maybe there's more than just two colors, that could also get a little bit complex 
in its own right. So now we've got something totally different and new, and this is the last puzzle that I actually got up to when I was messing around in this. So we need to get all of our dots to be yellow, and then put them in this goal. I don't know why I was putting them there to start with, that's not exactly where we need to be. Uh, what we do need to do though is go over here and turn everything yellow if possible. Now over here we've got a whole variety of little switches and levers, and all of these are manipulated just by putting uh, a couple of bits of confetti in each one of these slots on each part. Uh, so now we've opened up the way all the way through, but as you can see, we've got a couple of other colors competing here. Uh, we've got the blue and the red happening as well. So let's get a whole bunch of yellow, and we'll see if we can maybe get it through without exposing it all to the red. This is going to be a rather intricate little dilemma here. Actually, you know what we could do? If I wasn't such a ding-dong, maybe I actually would have thought of this on the way through. Let's reset it. How about I just don't trigger the top one, and then we should not have to worry about the red at all. So I think right here, this is pretty much the optimal setup. Uh, we've got everything pretty much staged and ready to go. Uh, the only thing that can really mess us up here is the blue on the right side of that long vertical uh, corridor. And in this case, it's not even going to be a huge problem for me because really I can just stick to the left wall. Uh, they're going to have to be a smaller uh, the horizontal layout than that to even get into that tube in the first place. So unless they bunch up, well, we'll see how it goes. Let's get a little bit of the yellow up through there if possible. Stick it on on the left side. And then we'll just cross that. Th oh, yeah, all right. I see how this could be a problem now. As you try to cross over from here, uh, whatever ends up left over on that side is going to end up pushed into the blue. But you can see this requires just a little bit of forethought because, well, I was being silly the first time, but if I would have thought about it, I didn't even need to unlock that red uh, area in the first place. Uh-oh. Wait, wait, which is going to happen? Overcome, overcome the blue. Uh-oh. Well, I think I screwed it. Yeah, all right, the blue is going to take over the yellow in this case. I'm not sure why uh, or how it figures out what gets to take over. Yeah, it's, it's clearly the blue is the stronger of the two there. So let's open this up one more time. Just as far as we need to, of course. And we'll try a little harder not to run into the blue element this time. This is a pretty interesting little premise, right? I mean, it's I haven't really seen a ton of games that have this kind of a style to them. And it's uh, very interactive, you know, without being pretentious or overwrought or anything. The art style is pretty, but rather simplistic at the same time. And I'm not saying that like it's a negative, honestly. I actually prefer uh, a lot of the time that things look fairly simplistic, especially when they have a sense of character to them. And I do feel that this is one of those games that does. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, still a bit shy of what we need. So this is going to be the problem is when we get back up again on the second go. These are all going to get in the way. Oh, we actually did just fine on that one. Let's see if that might be enough. I have a feeling it won't be, though. We could separate out the blue. Let's see. Oh, actually, the blue in that case was being overtaken. Oh, we're so close. I just need a little bit more. All right, if I could just get that much more, that's probably going to be enough to do it. And then we'll be off onto a puzzle that I haven't seen yet. And there we go. All right, we actually solved that one. Plus, I also want to leave a few for you guys. Crates, how original? Uh-oh. Well, crate puzzles could be a little bit difficult. Uh, so we can only spawn things up at the top. It is a little strange how it's a little inconsistent when you can spawn things uh, where you can spawn them. But I'll deal with it. You know, the, the levels are not that vast and diverse in general that it's something that I worry about. Uh, the scope of the game is not super, super huge. Alright, so in this case, actually, very, very simple to deal with. These crates are just simply moved around like that, and then we'll just drop down in here, and yeah, solved. Alright, that is not even a thing, really. I was expecting that to be much more complex. So what do we have to deal with here? There's a couple of buttons, it looks like, and we've got a section on both sides that we need to get some sand or particles or confetti or whatever we're calling them into. You know, this reminds me, actually, back in the day, uh, I used to have an iMac, and I think before that even, is uh, my family's computer was a Centra 650, so an old Apple computer is, uh, you know, using uh, System 7, and we had the old uh, After Dark screensavers, and one of them, and one of my favorites, in fact, had a sort of a setup just like this, where it would spawn this little, like, sand particles. Oh, wow, I can carry this sucker up. I didn't realize I could do that. Oh, it's not bound by gravity. It's sort of like we're looking top-down on it or something. Um, yeah, I guess this is just to get in our way. But anyway, there was a screensaver that had a very similar setup to something like this, and it was uh, a lot of fun to look at for me. I definitely enjoyed having that. And uh, this is sort of interesting. It's like we get to play with the sand after all these years. I was a little kid when that was still a thing. You know, After Dark probably hasn't been around for quite a few years now, although I did have uh, the like our, an enhanced version of it at one point. 
Uh, no idea what happened to that. I may still have it even somewhere on my hard drive. Uh, I wasn't actually sure that the all that After Dark stuff actually even came out on Windows. I thought it was like an Apple thing since flying toasters and all that was a big deal. Uh, so now I've got to trigger these with probably that crate, I'm going to guess, unless I can just spawn so much of this stuff in that maybe I could just leave a little bit on the switch. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to use the crate, though. Oh, I actually got some through there. And maybe I could actually just spawn enough sand that this will work. But I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to use that, because there's actually that little, uh, uh, sort of like a bracket there to hold the thing in place. Gonna do this because it actually is on both sides. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to put it in both directions, but I think if I just cheese it like this, it should work. Just get enough through that gate by using, uh, you know, the sand to create a wall for itself. And oh, I'm out of particles to create, so that's the only downside, I guess, that there you can't just make infinite. I thought you could. Now, will this be enough? It may very well be. It is. is more than enough. And it seems like that sound effect actually is a little bit on the loud side for the, the next thing. I don't know if you guys can tell. Uh, there's also some decent music. I am enjoying pretty much the whole cohesive package of what there is on offer here in Aeolus Shift. Uh, the music is nice. The graphical style is, is you know, it's lovely. It's, it's complementary to the style of it. Again, lo-fi, uh, creative, and interesting to look at while still being very interactive and fun to play around with. I think you can go very far with a premise... Uh, when all you really even need to worry about is just the gameplay. And uh, when the art style does not seem overwrought or overcomplicated, I think it makes makes it way easier to like something, uh, regardless of, you know, what it looks like. So how am I going to get this shelf unit, whatever thing, over and underneath there? I think I need to creep somehow behind it. And yeah, okay, there we go, push it along. I could probably cheese it through the same way I did last time, but if I create too many particles in this scenario, I think I may end up in trouble. Come on. I guess we'll push it all the way into the corner, but then there's so many bits that it's hard to control then. Um, yeah, it's got to be on the right, though. So let's get these all out of the way, and then we'll push it down and around. So we're doing this like we're doing a sliding puzzle or something, right? We're trying to get things out of the way so we can then push them along in the right direction. Come on now. This is a little frustrating, but not the end of the world or anything, but it's definitely not as enjoyable, perhaps, as trying to uh, manipulate the switches and stuff. This feels a little bit more like you just have to manipulate this uh, crate properly, and that's really all the puzzle is. Now just, how do I get under? You know what? I think the problem is I've just got too many particles at this point. I think I've, I've broken the puzzle myself. Wait. Oh, I got it through. I got it through. Now I can actually grab all of these from over here, pull them up and around, and then maybe even get back around to the other side and then push it under. And we may even solve this today. There we go. Yeah, they actually have this nice uh, ability to, for some reason, just basically grab things from directly off of a wall and still be able to pull them along. Uh, you would think once something becomes flush with a wall, it's kind of like you're, you're out of luck at that point. All right, just a couple more and we're good to go. There we are. All right, so I think that's where I'm going to pretty much wrap up our coverage on Aeolus Shift. I do like the game. I definitely recommend it. I think you should go try it out yourself. It is free to play. You can play it on Congregate. You can even download it. Uh, so both of those links are actually, well, I think the one will lead to the other. So it's both in one. Uh, play it online, download it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, leave a little support for the video if you enjoyed it. The series is, uh, what are we, now? one away, I think, from the 700 mark. I gotta double check what I say that every single time because I always forget sometimes I miss a, a, a single video in my playlist and then it disrupts my entire count. Uh, but as far as I'm aware at the moment of me recording this, I think this is episode 699, but it might be 698, so don't quote me on that. Anyway, leave some support if you enjoy the series. I do very, very much appreciate it. And please do come back again tomorrow if you'd like to see more, because new episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So if you're in the mood for a new, strange, interesting, original, or artistic indie game, well, I've certainly got you covered, I would hope, at this point, with this many games to look at, many of which are free, by the way. And if you'd like to see them all sorted out, feel free to go check out over on my website, indie-impressions.com where every single episode has its own tags and is categorized. So if you're looking for a specific type of gameplay or a specific type of payment style, uh, that's a way that you can figure all that out. So anyway, I'm going to let you go for another day. Thank you, everybody, for watching, as always. And I will see you back again for another one tomorrow. So I hope you have a terrific night, and I will talk to you then. Later!